In this tutorial, we will create a new project and add a reactor. Before we proceed further with this tutorial, let us first understand the various kinds of similar equipment that can be designed using this software. In this software, the various equipments of similar nature are Pressure vessel Pressure vessel is an equipment with single pressurized chamber and can be a pressurized storage vessel, a receiver or say a filter or any similar kind of equipment. Note that it has single pressure chamber only. A jacketed vessel which is a pressure vessel with additional pressure chamber in the form of external jacketing. The jacketing could be of plain shell type with or without internal flow guiding spirals. It could be a limpet coil in the form of half pipe or a dimple jacket. A mixing vessel is a pressure vessel but with an additional facility of agitation or stirring the internal liquid. It does not have jacketing. This type of equipment generally helps in maintaining the uniformity of the stored liquid parameters. A reaction vessel is a jacketed vessel with a facility of agitation or stirring the internal liquid. Thus, this kind of equipment has the facility of agitation or stirring in addition to the facility for either heating or cooling the internal process liquid. The jacketing and agitation together enhances the reaction and heat transfer process. This software provides different menu selections for each kind of the above equipment. Each menu selection will pop up an appropriate configurational dialog and when this dialog is terminated, an appropriate equipment tree with all the relevant objects required for the equipment are automatically generated. This saves overall time required in designing of the equipment. We have considered a reaction vessel in this tutorial with the idea of covering all the aspects in the above four kinds of equipment. With this background, let us proceed further. This reaction vessel has dishes at the top and bottom ends. The jacketing is of plain shell type, partially covering the main shell and extending onto the bottom dished end. It is an agitator with say 20 horsepower and the agitator shaft RPM is 100. All the components in contact with the internal process liquid are of SS316 and the jacketing is of SS304. To begin with, we will first create a new project. Click on the project in the project explorer to select it and thus make it a current project. This will ensure that the equipment would be added to the selected project. Click on the equipment menu and select reaction vessel. Let's now fill all the appropriate detail that need to be filled in the displayed equipment configurational dialog. Since this is a reaction vessel and its axis is vertical, the dialog definitions, the front and rear ends mean the top and the bottom ends respectively. Please remember to select true for front end flanged entry. This will ensure that the top dished end is connected to the shell through a body or girth flange. This will help in disassembling of the shaft assembly. Depending on the entry in the field duty factor, the appropriate design safety factor is considered while deciding the agitator shaft. For instance, if the internal liquid is watery type, then one can choose light or very light duty. In case one is agitating highly viscous or gummy liquid or say slurry, then the duty factor selection should reflect this and then the selection could be heavy duty or severe duty. The field life years in the hours and day are the expected working years and the daily hours of operations. 
These two inputs together are used in evaluating the million number of revolutions to which the shaft supporting bearings are subjected. These revolutions along with their loads are used in the appropriate selection of the bearings. Please note that we are designing a shaft with a single impeller and hence the field entry number of impellers is set to 1. One more field in this dialog needs attention and that field is propped. In case the shaft is provided with an additional guiding bush support near the bottom end, then this field should be set to true. The rest of the entries in this dialog are self-explanatory. Now click on the dialogs button OK. The equipment will be added to the current selected project in the Project Explorer with equipment name Reactor R101. Under the entry Reactor R101, a tree list is generated wherein various details for the equipment can be seen, defined and or updated. Before we move further, it is important to understand the various parts of the equipment tree contents in the Project Explorer. At this point, it is emphasized that in case you haven't seen the tutorial on the software basics, we suggest you visit the same before continuing with this tutorial. Click on the entry Reactor R101, which by itself is a major definition entry, wherein the major configurational details or dimensional details are defined. Now update the contents in the Properties window. The next step is to input design data information. For this, locate the tree entry design data and then locate shell design data within. For reaction vessel, one has to enter shell site and jacket site design data. Each site's design information contains sub-entries to feed details for various conditions. First, enter the shell site operating and design data. Please note that the pressure units are kgf per square mm gauge. Having updated operating pressure and temperature operating, now you can proceed to updating of information in pressure and temperature design 1. Update the information as shown in the screens. Click on radiography and update the appropriate entries therein. Since corrosion allowance is set to zero, no updating is required. This process completes definition of shell site design data information. Now proceed to defining jacket site design data for which you have to update the subtree entries in jacket design data. This process completes the definition of design data information. The next step is to apply material of construction for various components. You can define materials of construction for the various component types in common areas and thus save time required in defining materials for each individual component. The definition of material is covered under the sub-tree Material Specs in the Project Explorer. Let us begin defining material for the main vessel components. For this, select Material Spec Combo Box on the left side vertical menu strip and select from the list of predefined material specs or the data sets.
the software user can update, add, modify, or change these data sets. You can learn more about this at later stages. The next step is to define the material for nozzles or the connections. Select the material for various components in the agitation system. This completes the material definitions. In following the entire above process, we have defined the equipment configuration, its overall dimensions, and have defined design data like pressure, temperature, under various conditions, radiography, corrosion allowances, and have defined material for the various components. While following the above procedure, you may have noticed that you have done minimum definitions or entered minimum inputs. The other entries have been left blank or empty and the software will decide or select the appropriate values for them. At this stage, let us proceed to designing of the equipment. First, you have to ensure that the equipment you want to design is the current equipment in case there are multiple equipments in the project. To make any equipment currently selected one, click on the equipment tag or any other item in its tree. Now select the submenu design equipment in the top menu design model to begin design of the equipment. While the equipment is designed, any design warning or errors that occur are displayed in the errors and warnings window. The warnings are displayed in black color and any severe errors displayed in red. In case of warnings, the user can review them and take the necessary corrective action if required, while in case of errors, the user has to take the necessary corrective action for the equipment design to proceed further. You can notice that there are certain warnings only and there are no errors displayed in the errors and warnings window. For the moment, let us ignore the warnings. The next logical step is to see the design output. Let us proceed to see the design output for the top dished end, dish end front. The design output is displayed in an area called the output window which is a tabbed page. The top of each output window has tab entries and on clicking each tab you can see the output for that particular design condition. Now click on the shell flange front object and generate the report for it by selecting the submenu code report from the top menu create report. This will display the design report for the shell flange front object. You can use the right side scroll bar in the output window to scroll the report and see its detail. Now let us change the flange configuration to forged SA182F316 of type fabricated WNR. Now select the submenu design equipment in the top menu design model to redesign the equipment and thereafter check the shell flange front design output. Click on the shaft item node in the subtree agitation assembly and generate the report for it by selecting the submenu code report from the top menu create report. This will display the design report for the shaft object. Similarly, you can select other items in this equipment tree and review their design reports. The reactor equipment above has been provided with lux supports and also lifting lux items. The lux supports object item appears in the subtree support assembly and the lifting lux object item appears in the subtree accessories assembly. 
the software has automatically selected the appropriate types and the dimensional configurations for these objects or items. You can see their design output. The last thing of importance is to note the contents of the design report of the Reactor R101 tree node. Click on the Equipment tree node Reactor R101 and generate its design report. Scroll and watch the contents of the uncorroded Design 1 condition. It reflects the various inputs, overall equipment dimensions and weight parameters, design data information, materials selected and then the item-wise bill of quantities. Now scroll and select the Foundation Loads tabbed page of this output window. This will display the Foundation Load details that can be transferred to the Civil Department for Foundation Design. The procedure for addition of nozzles or connections, their flange etc. is same as shown in the earlier tutorials and hence it isn't replicated here. You may visit other tutorial for more information on this. This completes the tutorial. For software inquiry, email us at cadm at vsnl.com. You can download a trial version of our software from our website www.cadm.in. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel www.youtube.com slash cadm channel. You can also follow us on www.facebook.com slash cadm india and www.linkedin.com slash company slash academy.